Wow, here we are again, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word. You'll have to forgive my dual glasses. I've lost the only pair of glasses I had I could see with and uh, haven't been able to uh, remedy the situation. So, uh, I have, uh, I'm have. i a person with eight years of grade school and uh, 40 years of Bible school. And I think my 40 years of Bible school overcame my eight years of grade school, even though I still am not a punctual man or a man that knows punctual like I should. But I started out in 1972 with this Bible right here. This is the King James Version Bible. It is marked from cover to cover. This is the first Bible I read from cover to cover all the way through. I read this whole Bible, marked every verse in it, underlined every verse, studied it. How did I do that? Well, <clears throat> when I first got saved in 1972, um, the Lord put me in the Bible. And I got in it, and I got it on record. That was a few years ago. I still have it on record. And I started reading along with the record. And I started underlining my Bible. And I started learning what the Bible said. And I've been in it on a daily basis ever since. And therefore, I have 30-something years, perhaps, in Bible study. So, I don't just study the Bible Itself, even though the Bible itself is where everything that I study is contained in here. And that one of the first pages in this Bible that I have here is how to study the Bible. The Bible is the greatest book ever written. Uh, and God himself speaks to men. It is a book of divine inspiration. It offers comfort in sorrow. A guidance and perplexity, advice for the problems, rebuke for our sins, and daily inspiration for our every need. A doctor couldn't give us a better uh, piece of paper to tell us about what we need for ourselves than this document we just read, this little bitty uh, one paragraph that we just read says that everything that you need can be found in this book. And and you can find it in this book. The Bible is not simply one book. It is an entire library of books covering the whole range of literature. It includes history, poetry, drama, biology, biographies, prophecies, philosophically uh, spoken. Uh, it has science. It has uh, inspirational reading, little wonders, big wonders. Then all a part of the Bible has been translated into more than 1,200 languages. And every year, more copies of the Bible are sold from any other single book. This still is the best-selling book in the world. <clears throat> There's one problem with this. We find it not to be the most read book in the world. It is the most bought book. Everybody wants one on their, their uh, roster. Everybody wants one somewhere on, in their home. Some people do not have any idea what the Bible contains. They have one. The Bible alone truly answers the greatest questions that men of all ages have asked. Where have I come from? This is important. I'm studying an outside book right now. This is one of the books I'm studying, an outside book. And it tells the theme of where did man come from? Where is man in his daily life today, and where is man going? He finds out all of the answers in this book. Where he came from, why he is here, and where is he going? He says, where did I come from? Where am I going? Why am I here? 
How can I know the truth? For the Bible reveals the truth about God. This is why you need a King James Version Bible in your hand. It explains the origin of man. It points out the only way to salvation and eternal life. It explains the age-old problem of sin and suffering. This is important. The most important thing in your life is where you're going to spend eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity? Why not find something out about it now? The great theme of the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ and His work, the redemption for mankind. The person and work of Jesus is promised, prophesied, pictured in the uh, types and symbols of Old Testament in all of His truth. In beauty, the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed in the gospel and the full meaning of his life, his death, his resurrection. Wow. And the explanation in the epistles, his glorious coming again to earth in the future is unmistakably foretold in the book of Revelation. The great purpose of the writer's words of God the Bible is to reveal at the living word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Read John 1.1 1, 1 and 1-18. One Dr. Wilbur M. Smith relates seven great things that study of the Bible will do for us. Let's listen to his uh, discoveries. The Bible uh, discovers sin and convicts us. The Bible helps cleanse us from the pollution of sin. The Bible imports strength. The Bible instructs us in what we are to do. The Bible provides us with a sword for victory over sin. The Bible makes our lives fruitful. The Bible gives us power to pray. Wow. You do not need a whole library of books to study the Bible. The Bible is its own best commentator and the interpreter. With all of the uh, instructive helps that you have in this new Bible, you have a whole lifetime of Bible study. I've been studying this one Bible since 1972 and find it to be inexhaustible. You cannot exhaust it. You never can overread it. You need to read through it one time a year, every year, all the way through it by getting yourself a personal Bible study, a devotional time each day to read a few paragraphs, to read maybe a chapter or two, and uh, get through it as a devotional Bible. The Bible's not an end in itself, but it is a means to the end of knowing God and doing His will. The Apostle Paul said, Study to show thyself approved. A workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. And this is what we need to be. And uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 God has given us the Bible in order that we might know Him and that we might do His will here on earth. Do you know that a doctor that does not study his doctor books ought to not be a doctor? A Christian who does not study his Bible or his Christian book has nothing to give to other people. If, if a doctor was as callous in his learning his doctor things as we are as Christians, he would be worthless. And we as Christians have become worthless in a sense that we have not given our devotional Bible study time that made it the most important thing in our life. 
the kind of Bible study that the average person does today is usually out of a book that's not even the Bible. If it's not the King James Version, it's a perversion. It's a watered down version. It's a version that can carry you the wrong way. If I take my road map that I have from 1970 and I head out in a direction today and I'm using that 1970 road map, I'm probably not going to find the roads that are on that map. Because we are changeable people. But this road map never changes. This road map has no changes in front of it. It's not been changed. And if you have a Bible that's been changed, it's the wrong road map. It's the wrong Bible map. So you need a Bible that's not been changed. Stick to the King James Version. You say, well, I don't understand the these and the thou's. Well, learn that thee is and what thou is. Thee is he, me, and thou is me. <laughs> you say you and yours. That's both you, isn't it? It's you and yours. Reading and studying the word of God in order, we may hear God's voice. And that we may know how to do his will. And to live a better Christian life. It says, see page 832. Well, if we go uh, to find the page numbers in this Bible, and we want to find 832, we will probably go to the back of it, or close to the back of it in the book of Matthew. And... Um, we could find page 832 if we knew how. If he had told me the book instead of the number, the page, I would I've been there already, more than likely. Uh, and uh, this is in the middle of this Bible. 832 undoubtedly is uh, 29, 31. 831, this is all Bible maps, Bible stories, how the, the Bible came about. And 832 is the writings of the early church. And the focus on Peter and Paul's letters. Uh, Paul spends nearly three years at Damascus and ten years in uh, obscurity in Tarshish before he is ready for mission work. And then he goes out on his first, second, third mission journey, and and he does writings while he's out. The principle of the thing is, is that we read that Paul learned from, even though he was an astute man, he stopped at a point in his life, and he learned. I have a grandson that is doing that now. He has stopped in his Christian life to go to school. He's going to the same school I went to. I went to a small college. So Paul spends three years at Damascus and ten years in obscurity in Tarshish before he's ready for mission work. Wow! He was missionary in all the time, but it wasn't like when he went out with the power of God on him. And the principle God wants to show us in the understanding the Christian life and the destiny is our life and the destiny of f following th the pattern that Paul set for us to go out and do. And by the way, all of these first apostles gave their life for Jesus Christ. And they gave their physical life <laughs> for Jesus Christ. Uh, so, uh, where I have uh, come from, and where am I going? Why am I here? How can I know the truth? For the Bible reveals the truth about God. It explains the origin of man. It points out the only way to salvation and eternal life. And it explains 
explains the age-old problem of sin and suffering. The greatest theme of the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ and his work of redemption for mankind. The person and work of Jesus uh, are promised, <clears throat> prophesied and pictured in the types and symbols of the Old Testament. In all his truth and beauty, the Lord Christ is revealed in the gospel and the full meanings of his life, his death, his resurrection, uh, his explained in his epistles, his glorious uh, coming again to earth in the future is unmistakably foretold in the book of Revelation and the great purpose of the writings word of God. The Bible is to reveal the living word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Read John 1, 1 through 18. Dr. William M. Smith relates seven great things that is studied in the Bible will do for you. The Bible discovers sin and convicts us. The Bible helps cleanse us from pollution of sin. The Bible imports strength. The Bible instructs us in what we are to do. The Bible provides us with a sword of victory over sin. The Bible makes our lives fruitful, and the Bible gives us power to pray. Wow. And we need that power to pray. We do not need a whole library of books to study the Bible. The Bible is its own best commentary. The Bible is its own best commentary. And the interpreter, with all of the instructions to help that you have in this new Bible, you have a whole lifetime of Bible study. This one Bible right here, this one Bible, this one right here, is all I've ever really needed. I have books. I'm surrounded by books. I have studied and read many people's books. Probably if I had wasted some time, if I had only stayed just in this book, this one book only, this one particular study Bible right here, it is probably one of the best put together study Bibles that ever was. I wish I could find uh, the, uh, it's a 1985 by Thomas Nelson, and it's called an Open Bible, and it is an expanded edition, and all rights, it said, of course, are reserved, and that's always written in, in these, but the right to follow Jesus Christ is found in this book, and that's the freedom to do everything. All of the people who put stuff in here, have their names in here. This is one of the best uh, literary guides in it. Uh, in this particular, I don't know if you can see right there how it shows that there are little letters before things and it has a sideline that tells us what that verse means and where to go and find it again in the Bible. It's its own dictionary. The Bible is its own dictionary. If you know how to take the New Testament and go to the same verse in the Old Testament and find it, it's important. It's important you get in the Bible so that you don't go go wrong. And otherwise, you can go wrong. And uh, this was my wife's cat. My wife went to heaven a few years ago, left her cat behind. Your cat has a, adopted me up here in my office. By the way, I stay in my office, I sleep in my office, I eat pretty much in my office, I do my study in my office, and I get on a computer in my office, <laughs> and this is where, where my life is when I'm not working. I'm a paint contractor, and I got to go to work tomorrow, so I'm going to have to go to bed tonight. So, uh, we will see you next time. Get in the Bible and have a good life, will you? All right. Study it. You'll love it.
Bye bye. My finger's jittery and I can't get on that little bitty square and stop us. I don't know why I can't stop us. Hmm. It won't shut me down. Unless we're doing something wrong.